Uh, I would like to call upon Mr. Suresh Ayer, the CIO of Blue Star Limited, to present his views. Good afternoon. It's two o'clock, and I'm reminded of Domino's Pizza's punchline: "Hungry, kya?" I'm sure all of you must be hungry. So I'm going to keep this even briefer. Just to give you an insight on how brief, I had a 150 slide presentation. I used artificial intelligence on it, and luckily for me, it told me to delete it all. So I am going to delete. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rawlani. I thought your presentation was really philosophical. And I agree with you on one part, which was related to making it easy, making life easier, making it more productive. And that's where AI can really help. Before I get started, as I said, I'm going to keep this exactly for 10 minutes. If I exceed it, please tell me. I represent Blue Star. We are in the business of designing, manufacturing, selling, and servicing of air conditioners and water purification uh, products, both commercial and residential. So we've got room air conditioners on one end, we've got water purifiers at another end, and then we've got the chillers and the larger air conditioners at the other extreme. You know, five, four years back is when we started looking at what we should do from a digital standpoint. Four years back is when we kept hearing about emerging technologies such as SMAC, IoT, AI, analytics, which is anyway a part of SMAC. Four years after that, I think I have become philosophical because those technologies are still emerging. So frankly speaking, you don't know what has happened in the four years really. Have they emerged? Or are we at a standstill? And that is one question which keeps bothering me for which I have no answer. But coming back, four years back, we had a number of mission critical systems, as we call it, right, within an organization. One was SAP, which was a ERP. Second was a CRM for a service management. Third was a ClickSense, which was a report, ClickView, which was a reporting tool. We had two more critical systems. One was email, the other was spreadsheets. Almost all data existed in spreadsheets. So there was no way one could even think about applying anything like AI where data is of importance. Data not only in terms of volume, but also in terms of quality, in terms of linkages as well. So four years back, we tried to you know, develop a vision as to how we could use technologies such as artificial intelligence in, to, in our organization. We applied it to sales, service, manufacturing, and customers. And I say customers, it's more about the products itself. Four years from then, which is now, we have got over 600 chillers connected through IoT. We are monitoring them remotely. We are developing air conditioners and water purifiers. Somebody spoke about water as a service. We are also thinking about cooling as a service. But we are developing firmware where there's going to be intelligence sitting in those air conditioners, which is going to advise customers on how to use it best, how to save energy, and how to also run self-diagnostics and correct itself. Again, artificial intelligence are going to help us there. The third area where we are trying to look at AI is to help improve the efficiency of our people. Our people work very hard. They spend 12 to 18 hours every day. And if you look at it, you'll find 90% of the time is being spent in trying to find information. And they will use the remaining two hours to act upon that information. We are trying to reverse that. What we are trying to do is remove those 16 hours away from their 80 hour day and give that information through bots or virtual assistants. Give everybody in the organization a private secretary. And that vision is something which we are actually realizing today. So there are quite a few things which we have done. In our manufacturing setup, we have put in place computer visions. We have put in place robotics. We have implemented IoT, which is, again, you know, pretty much yielding a lot of information for us. So what we have done in four years is put in place systems which allow us to collect data. And we have also managed to interlink the data across the systems so that we could leverage the power of artificial intelligence or technology such as analytics going forward. And we are at that stage. You must have heard everybody else talk about their experiences. Most of them have been good, but there are quite a few challenges as well. And we are seeing a lot of them. Some of them are related to the data. Some of them are related to the environment. Some of them are related to the people itself. 
not everybody knows the power of AI. Not everybody can adapt to it as well. Simple example, as I said, we've got over 600 chillers connected to a remote monitoring center. We are using IoT to capture the data every 10 seconds. We are talking about a huge volume of information coming into our systems. We have also applied predictive modeling on top of it, which allows us to find out if a chiller is going to break down based on certain correlation. We are also applying machine learning on that data to look at patterns to come and you know, help us predict a potential failure based on an occurrence of that pattern. So we are using a learning model there. It is learning from it. It's in experimental mode. It threw up a problem that a potential chiller in one of our customer sites is going to go down possibly in the next two days based on the previous pattern. So this is testing mode, right? We are trying to figure out. Two days later, the machine does go down. We were very happy that the model works. But you know what we found? The customer had switched off that machine. The machine was live, actually alive, but it was down because the customer had switched off. It was not detected by a remote monitoring center as such an event. It was seen as a failure. So now we have to go back and rectify those systems such that we are able to differentiate between a system going down because of a customer switching it off versus an actual event which has happened because of failure in the system. We implemented something known as a demand forecasting model for our salespeople. You know, it was brilliant. We had data rolling up from our branches or from our dealers to the branches, from the branches to the regions, regions to corporate, and then going down to our manufacturing facilities for and supply chain. We used to use Excel here, and you know how complicated it could get if you had some 500 salespeople across the country. By the time you roll up, it's almost two weeks, and by the time you finish distilling it, another one week. So three weeks to get that data across to manufacturing. This system allows me to collate it, roll it up. It also uses a lot of advanced algorithms underneath, which allows us to predict what could be the sales forecast for the next two months. It uses my past data, it uses my seasonality, and it uses a number of other parameters to help us understand what could be the pattern. I'm not sure how many of you are aware, this year has been a pretty bad year for air conditioning industry. The weather has not played ball with us. In fact, it has been completely unexpected, and sales for most of the air conditioning companies, especially in the retail side, has been down. But you know what the model was predicting? A 25% sales growth. How do I correct for this anomaly year? So now what we are trying to do, we are trying to figure out how to integrate the advanced weather model into this setup so that I can factor that input. We are seeing all kinds of evidences now. Now because I've got zero sales coming up or near zero sales, the model is needing to be fine-tuned again because this is not fitting into the pattern of sales which we are expecting or which the algorithms are expecting. It's a challenge. The technology companies can't figure it out as well because it's an anomaly which they don't know how to handle. Third example of where a challenge could exist, manufacturing. We've put in place an advanced planning and scheduling system to help them manage their production. What should they do on a day-to-day -day basis? Most of our factories make more than one product every day. In one particular factory, so this, this algorithm takes into account what is your capacity, what are the raw materials you have in inventory, what is the forecast, and a number of other such parameters, including people and the skills available in that shift. In one particular factory, we had a big problem. This model predicts on the basis of available raw material. It tells you what you can produce today, tomorrow, and day after. This particular factory had a very curious requirement. They wanted to have a production plan even without inventory in hand. And the reason for that was because they could source the material just in time, and that was not apparent in any of the other factories. And therefore, the model didn't cater to that, nor was it revealed to us. To customize that model is taking a huge amount of time now. But the basic thing which we keep trying to come back to again and again, or which we are learning is, you'll need to understand what is happening at the ground level, okay? As a technology, it has a lot to offer. But it is your organization which matters. It's your people which matter. They need to know how to do it. They need to know how to use it. If they are not aware of what it means, none of these are going to work. They go back to their previous means. Today, the demand forecasting, because of the issue which we are having, is being used as an Excel again. They are using it to feed the data, 
and they are ignoring the forecast. Now, I am forced to now react to that situation as to how do I address that particular seasonality issue in this particular case. The point which I am trying to make is, AI is good, but you will have a lot of practical challenges. Some of them are associated with the data. Do you have the right amount of data? Do you have the right linkages of the data? Number two, do you have the right set of people trained to be able to use it? Do they understand what it means? And are they able to change some of their own ways of doing things to be able to cater to the advantages this technologies offer? And third is, many a time the process itself may have to be fine-tuned such that you know or you are able to move it through in a much more easier manner. Simple example, we got a bot which is used by our salespeople to manage their day-to-day -day life. It actually allows, gives them information right there on their mobile as to what they should do today. It points out which dealers they should talk to. It points out whether any collections are due from a particular dealer and therefore he should focus his energies on it, in collecting them. It focuses on which stocks are lying in my plant and therefore what I should move along in the interest of the organization. But many a time you find that the person there is more interested in doing whatever he still wants to do. And he tends to ignore those things and you will find him placing an order for a product which is not in stock. These kind of behavioral changes is where we run into frequent challenges. So when you are trying to attempt something, make sure you know what you want to do and it is aligned to what your organization needs rather than trying to come out with something which it's still not ready for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, we'll take a lunch break of half an hour and we'll get back here and for the next session. So everybody, please join us for lunch, which is arranged.